Did Harley Davidson do the unthinkable and actually copy Indian this year? That's what we're going to be looking at as I take the pricing and the features and compare them to this year's Challenger to this year's Road Glide. Now, I've already done a full-blown comparison between these two bikes, but I really want to hone in on those features, and I really want to look at what the Indian Challenger is going to give you that the Harley won't, and vice versa. That way, not only will you know about what you can expect to pay, but what features you're going to be gaining and or losing. And then again, at the end of the video, I'll tell you if I really think that Harley-Davidson copied Indian. Now to simplify this whole video, I want to look at the base Challenger and the Dark Horse, compare that to this year's Road Glide. So we're not looking at all of the different trim levels, but this is going to give you a really good idea of what you can expect to get with each one of the motorcycles. So if you like the content that I do here, consider subscribing and hit your notifications. And I'd love to have y'all join the Shot Squad. You gain access to some pretty cool perks. We want to build that up and get our first 10 members by the end of the month. Love to have you join either here or over on Patreon. Let's go and get started. Now, the first thing I wanna look at is Base Challenger and Dark Horse. One of the most important features that you're gonna get on the Indian side is gonna be Smart Lean technology. Now, what this does is it has a Bosch six axis IMU. So it's always looking at your lean angle, your front and rear wheel speed, and it wants to make sure that it's maximizing the traction that you're getting out of your tires so you never lose that, right? But it's not only doing that on straightaways, it's also doing that in corners where it's most needed. So no matter if it's trying to prevent loss of traction or if it's helping you if you have to come to an emergency stop in the middle of a corner while the bike's leaned over, it's always measuring those things and doing the work for you essentially and allowing you to come to a safe stop and give you more confidence on the bike. Now this is not a replacement for training on your motorcycle and I completely understand that but I really love this technology and I think it'll help to save a lot of riders. So the Smart Lane technology is going to come standard on every model of the Challenger from the Dark Horse and up. It won't come on the Base Challenger. So the Base Challenger is 26.5. Your Dark Horse is going to be right at 31. Now, of course, this is not including any kind of specialized paints. You know, the Sunset Orange that I really like is like 31.7 and then they have a a blue one that's like, you know, I don't know, $33,000. So those are going to add to the price for sure. They have been using Smart Lean since the year 2020, which was the first year the Challenger came out. Now, of course, that's passed on to some of the other baggers and touring motorcycles that they have. Now, on the Harley Davidson side, they have RDRS, which they also introduced in the year 2020. But they offered it only in the CVO models the freewheeler and the trike. And then in 2021, that's when it became an optional upgrade for all of the touring bikes. Now, back then those bikes were, you know, 27.5, 28.5, 29.000. And then, you know, you could add, you know, 11 or $1,200 for RDRS on top of that. So this is one area where I feel like Indian's been doing a better job since the beginning because it's always been, even though they have a lot more trim models now, or trim levels I should say, if you got those upgraded trim levels on the Indians, you always got those additional features. Now with the RDRS, you have everything that I just talked about, the cornering, trash control, ABS, standard ABS, standard trash control, uh, hill hole control, and TPMS all included in that. With Harley, you could have bought the more expensive special version or limiteds or whatever and still not had RDRS included. Bringing us up to the current year, all models of the Road Glide, the base Road Glide that starts at $26,000, they're all going to have these safety features included. So when we look at the standard Road Glide and compare that to the base Challenger this year, Road Glide has actually come down in price because you don't get the Smart Lean with your base Challenger, but you do get it with the standard Road Glide. It's kind of a big win for Harley this year when you look at those safety features, but Indian offers quite a bit more, and we're gonna take a look at that right now. 
Now, one of those things that Indian's been doing now since 2020 and even before that is the motorized windshield. So you can move it up, you can move it down, you can set it exactly where you want it. And, you know, I could probably see most people just kind of setting it once and forgetting it, which is totally fine. But if you want to bring more air over you on a, on a warmer day or keep more air off of you on a colder day, you always have that option. Now, it's going to add a little bit of weight and bulk to that fairing, but at the same time, you're going to get that with all of the uh, Challenger models, so the base and all of the trim levels above it. With the Harley-Davidson, they've done a redesign on their windshields. They're all really low now, uh, so you're not going to be able to, to adjust those. Uh, this is going to be one area where I can see a lot of Road Glide owners, you know, just automatically upgrading that thing because, like I said, the current one looks really nice. It just doesn't do a great job as far as wind protection. Another thing that Indiana is going to give you on the dark horse and up is going to be remote locking saddlebags. It's one of my favorite features that Indian has been doing for a number of years now uh, because I'm always locking my stuff up. I never walk away from my bike and not lock it up, right? So I'm always down there with a barrel key and locking each one of the compartments, you know, the saddlebags, the, the tour pack and all of that kind of stuff. With the Indian, boom, you hit a button, it's locked. But yes, this is going to add a little bit of weight, but I'll take that. And plus, it doesn't take up a whole bunch of space inside of your saddlebag which is one thing that I really appreciate about this design. Now you can get this on Harley, but you're gonna to have to go up to the CVO models in order to do that. Of course, some of the CVO models now, uh, specifically the CVO Road Glide ST does not have that feature because they wanted to cut weight on that bike, but you would have to go up to that level in order to get that. That's one area I feel like Harley kind of dropped the ball this year because they could have sold that package for sure, and I can tell you right now that I would 100% bought that. And I'm gonna leave a link down below. If you buy from Harley Davidson, you can use my link. It doesn't cost you anything extra and I get a little kickback and you can support the channel. Uh, this is a very new link, and so I'll make sure I set it up down below. You input your bike information and boom, you can shop for whatever you normally do just through my link. So it's pretty cool. Now, one of the biggest selling points this year is cutting weight across all of the motorcycles. And that's something that they really did an incredible job on. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I had my buddy's Road Glide Limited in the garage for, I don't know, a month or two. You know, he just needed to store here for a little while because he was down in our area. He kind of travels back and forth. So I was like, yeah, you can keep it here. Well, anyways, I had to move that thing in and out of the garage a couple of times. And his is a 2020, so it's not like it's a really old motorcycle, but man, it felt so much heavier than my motorcycle does. So they've really done a great job of cutting weight. And so I totally understand that, but that's one package. If they offered a remote locking saddlebag and trunk option, I would for sure buy that. So that's something I think they should offer in future iterations of the new Road Glide. Another area Indian has been doing really well since it came out is in their selectable ride modes. So no matter if it's rain, sport, or standard, you've always been able to change the throttle response on Indians, which is another thing that I appreciate. And so uh, Harley has never done this until the current model year. So that's gonna come on all models of the Road Glide. Well, there is only one model, so, you know, of course it's going to come on there, but that's another thing that's included. And, of course, on the Indian side, you are going to get all selectable ride modes on the base and up. So, all of their bikes come with that as well. Now, here's another area that's really interesting, and that is in the screen. How you see a lot of this technology, and Harley really went all out this year. Indian retained their digital gauges, and their seven inch ride command screen. The ride command is gonna give you a number of different things. When you buy the motorcycle, you're gonna get one year complimentary service, and then it's a hundred bucks per year after that. It's gonna give you live weather updates and traffic alerts and all of that kind of stuff. You're gonna be able to go into the screen, see all of your parameters, and then of course you have your digital gauges as well. If you don't like the digital gauges that are on the screen, you can always use the analog gauges that are built into the fairing. Now, I never really thought about how kind of cluttered this looks until 
Harley Davidson came out with their new design this year, which is just a 12 and a half inch screen on a new operating system, by the way, and everything is built into that screen. It is wall to wall glass and it looks freaking amazing. And not only does it look amazing, it is big, bold, and super easy to read. That TFT display and what they have on that display with Harley is, I don't know if it, I don't think it's second to none, to be honest with you. They really did a fantastic job, no matter if the sun is blaring right down on it from behind you or whatever, no matter the time of day, or if it's nighttime, it doesn't matter. You can read that screen clearly. Now you have some options that you can go through on the Harley Davidson screen. So you can go into sport mode, which is gonna bring the digital tachometer front and center. You can go to touring mode, which is gonna, you know, have, of course, if you have your Apple Maps, and then it's gonna have your speedometer and tachometer on the left-hand side. And then you could also adjust the widgets that you see as well. So your ambient air temperature or your coolant temp battery voltage, all of that kind of stuff you can customize as well. Then of course you can go to normal mode, which is gonna have your tachometer and your speedometer, and then of course the widgets that you set. Again, it's just how clean this setup looks. I mean, the fairing is kind of wide open now. Of course you have your speakers, you have your compartments, which are much bigger. I kind of talk about all of that stuff in, in the comparison, I'm not gonna get into that here, but uh, everything just looks so clean. Your riser clamps, they're wide open right there. So if you need to do adjustments with the bars, you can absolutely do that. The Challenger looks really cluttered now compared to the new Road Glide. And even the old previous year Road Glides look really cluttered compared to the new Road Glide. They really did an incredible job, man. The engineers helped clean this thing up, give you a little bit more room in there and just kind of just freed everything and made all of it go into this big, nice display that like I said can be read so easily no matter what the conditions are and that's not something that I want to understate or undersell. The Indian fairly easy to read but you're also talking about a 7 inch display compared to a 12 and a half so it's really hard to compare there. I definitely prefer that of the Rogue Glide. I just think it is a much better system and if you're a technology nerd which I like technology so i I'm one of those people, um, you get a lot of information packed in there. Another thing that Indian has done for a number of years is when you pull in the clutch, your gear indicator doesn't go away. Such a simple feature, and yet Harley has never done that until this year. And again, it's a big, bright, bold, uh, you know, gear indicator there. So you know, any whatever gear you're in, you can clearly see it, you pull on the clutch, doesn't matter, it doesn't go away on you. It's always right there. It's just kind of nice, man. Sometimes you forget what gear you're in and you know, like, okay, I think I'm in fifth or what, I don't know. Anyways, it's just nice that, it's, that it doesn't go away when you pull in the clutch. Of course, this isn't all about technology. We need to talk about the design themselves. I think it's clear, if we're being honest, that Indian definitely took some design cues from Harley. That's just my opinion, but I think to me, it seems clear, you know, when they first started coming out with their baggers, you know, they had the old school bubbly type of saddlebags, big old fenders, all that kind of stuff. And they've definitely trimmed these things down. Now they have more of a slammed bagger appearance, like what Harley started doing with their specials. Harley simplified their design this year. Now they're going more performance touring motorcycle. So I think when we look at the design of like your saddlebags, your gas tank, even the fairing, I don't see very many resemblance at, at all from the Harley Davidson to the Indian. Maybe somebody could say that they copied Indian this year a little bit, might be in the headlight, but once you see these two bikes side by side, I don't even think that's the case. Somehow Harley was able to make this singular headlight now almost look as if it has dual headlights still like traditional road glides did before it. Of course they have the W-shaped light underneath the main headlight, right? And all the turn signals, everything is integrated into that one. Now Indian really didn't change a whole lot this year. They have the Cyclops headlight with the squiggly LEDs on either side of that. These two bikes couldn't look any more different. 
The fairing designs are totally different. The fairing on the Challenger has a more bubbly type appearance, whereas the Road Glide is more shaved, shaved down and it's got, you know, cut and contrast lines in it or more contrast lines in it, more shape to it now than previous Road Glide models before it. Definitely cut some, some, some weight and some surface area off of that fairing. And while both of them provide a good amount of, of, of surface area, I guess, or have a lot of surface area, I think it's, it's definitely clear to me that Roguelide has kind of, or Harley has kind of, you know, wanted to slim that thing down as much as humanly possible. And when we look at the side covers, right, what did Harley do this year? They painted the top and they blacked out the bottom. So it's almost the same size side cover, but they wanted to give it an appearance that it's actually smaller. What'd they do with the bags? They went away from those slammed uh, saddlebags, the stretch saddlebags, which I always thought looked really awesome. They went to a performance bag. Not only is it a bigger saddlebag now with more storage area, but it actually sits up above the pipe. We have contrast cuts on the back of those bags. They're a little bit wider. Also in the tank, we have the same size tank, but more lines are cut into it. They also simplified the center console now. So that's one area where Indian has been doing a better job, in my opinion, is in the uh, fuel cap area and all that kind of stuff, Harley Davidson has now changed from what they had before, which was just kind of an awful design, to a more clean design, right? You have more plastic on the sides um, of the Indian Challenger, so you really don't have a lot of breathability, I guess is a good term, in that whole engine bay area and right underneath the rider, but everything is pretty much closed in with a mixture of plastics and, of course, the engine itself. The rear end of the bike, Indian, has the LEDs, right? They have LEDs all the way around. They have the two bullet turn signals in the rear, whereas Harley-Davidson went with the CVO style uh, strips that are flush against the rear fender. They also took the antenna away, right? To give it more of a clean look, whereas the Indian still has a traditional type of antenna. And then the last area that I really wanna focus on here is the motor. Now we actually asked the engineers at Harley when we did the press event, like, hey, you know, why not go with a uh, fully liquid cooled motor? And their answer is pretty simple and I think it makes a lot of sense. Harley-Davidson customers expect not only a certain sound, but also a certain look. And so while that may have some restrictions on what Harley can do, they were able to get around that by adding liquid cooled heads, right? But also redesigning the intake track, the cylinder heads, the airbox, gearing, to get the most out of that 117 motor and get those numbers up to a respectable amount. And let's just say that 130 foot pounds of torque and 105 horsepower, this thing is an absolute monster, especially when you consider the weight savings and you throw the thing in sport mode and it's a heck of a lot of fun. Now, the Power Plus motor, the 108 Power Plus that's in the Indian Challenger is an absolute tank. This thing's 122 horsepower and 128 foot-pounds of torque. It is still a faster motorcycle stock, but it also has a much different look. So that is one thing that you have to consider. And let's be honest, man, aesthetics are huge with motorcycles. And anybody that is into Harley-Davidson's or even when I look at the engine bays compared, you know, comparatively on both motorcycles, I definitely prefer the Road Glide. It's just more open. I like that 45 degree twin. I like the fact that there's not a big old radiator in the front. It's just more appealing to me aesthetically. So I definitely understand why Harley went the route that they did. So not only are they keeping the riders cooler, not only were they able to get more horsepower and torque out of the motor by making some really small and big changes, to be honest with you, but they also kept the aesthetic appeal. So I would assume that they could have went with a liquid cool motor, but again, that would have that would have ruined the aesthetics um, and they could have got those numbers up even higher because liquid cooled motors are going to give you more power for sure. But again, aesthetics and tradition plays a big role in this. So, you know, here's the thing, man. A lot of you guys know that I bought a Road Glide, right? A lot of you guys know that I've had issues with that Road Glide. I think Harley, with all of those parameters and all of those stipulations considered, they made one 
banger of a motorcycle. Did they copy Indian? I think the biggest thing to take away here is that Indian provided enough competition and caused a big enough wave inside of Milwaukee that those guys were like, hey, we need to step up our game. We need to add these ride modes. We need to add more technology. And we need to give our consumers a better product at a cheaper price. And so here's my prediction for next year. The Indian Challengers, the Chieftains, all those bikes come down in price and we're gonna get some kind of crazy redesign. I don't know this to be true. I could be totally off base, but that's what competition in the market brings us as consumers is a better product. And fortunately in this case, actually a cheaper product in the road glide. So there you go. Do I think Harley copied Indian? Maybe they took some cues here and there, but let's be honest, Indian has done it when they came out with the Challenger and with their Chieftain, and this competition is good for all of us. So I don't really care. So there you go. There's my opinion, man, but I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. Do you think that Harley Davidson copied Indian this year? Let me know. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. And again, first 10 members to join the SHOT team. I'd love to have you guys join up. Big thanks. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.